Are you taking creatine and wondering if it's causing your hair to fall out? Maybe you've heard this can be true, not sure what's going on, and maybe you're taking creatine and worried that this might happen to you. My name is Dr. Taryn Ellick, and in this video, we're going to look at the question, does creatine cause hair loss? What does the research actually show and what is it like? As I said, my name is Dr. Taryn Ellick, and I'm making these videos to help you connect the dots on your health to go beyond just the basics, whether it's a confusing blood test, symptom, or diagnosis. I make these videos because I enjoy helping people get a better understanding of what's going on with their health. So if you like this kind of information on nutrition, health, hormones, et cetera, click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this one. Now for a quick disclaimer, the information in this video is for informational purposes only. It's not intended as a treatment for any health condition or as a substitute for seeing an actual doctor or medical profession. It should be used as an educational guide to deeper your understanding of your own health and treatment success. If medical attention is needed, don't delay in seeking that attention. All right, let's connect the dots on creatine and hair loss. Does creatine cause hair loss? A patient of mine recently pointed out that creatine does cause hair loss. I was surprised by this comment and curious to learn more about what the supposed mechanism was and what the research paper actually said in terms of creatine causing hair loss. Upon further investigation, I think it's very unlikely that creatine does cause hair loss, but let me present the details and you can decide for yourself. So I have links to the references in the description, but the recent study that created this theory that creatine may be causing hair loss or does cause hair loss found that supplementing with creatine led to higher levels levels of DHT. DHT is a testosterone derivative. DHT stands for dihydrotestosterone, and it's the derivative of testosterone that's thought to be the leading indicator or cause of hair loss in males and females, also known as androgenic alopecia. However, I think the study is a bit misleading in suggesting that creatine causes higher DHT level while there was an association there. So let's look at some of the details. So they assessed college-aged male rugby players who were supplemented with 25 grams of creatine for seven days, followed by five grams for additional seven days for a total of 14 days. There was a creatine group and a placebo group, group and the creatine group, the levels of DHT rose 56% after the seven-day loading period and remained 40% above the baseline levels of DHT. But was it really a true increase? So for sure, the math is correct, but it's, it can be misleading in small studies. I think there were only 20 people in the study total between the placebo and in the creatine group. The other thing is the DHT in the creatine group started at 23% lower than the control or placebo group. And that could just be an artifact of something going on with one or two of the people in the creatine group or vice versa. Maybe something was going on with the placebo group where their DHT levels were slightly higher when the study started. Maybe they got better sleep or something like that. Then add on top of this, while they were conducting the study, the control group actually had a slight decrease in DHT levels. So this could account for the statistically significant increase in DHT, both the small sample size, the starting with lower DHT in the creatine group, and the drop in creatine in the placebo group during the study. So if it was a much larger study, such a coincidence would get washed out by such large masses of people. But in this case, with such a small sample size, only 20 people, the chances of such a coincidence occurring is much higher. It's also important to note that this is the only study ever making this link with creatine and DHT levels. Intense exercise in and of itself can cause increases in these androgenic hormones. And there have been many studies looking at this, and seven of them found a small but statistically non-significant change in testosterone levels with intense exercise. Exercise clearly increases testosterone level, and testosterone does lead to more DHT. And from the results of the study, the creatine group clearly had higher DHT levels. So we can't really dispute that, but in terms of what the cause of that was, that is a little bit harder to determine. I think the small sample size in the coincidental starting parameters are likely to blame for this increase in DHT level rather than the creatine supplementation itself. In addition, there's lots of studies on creatine, and it's very, very safe. Many studies looking at creatine supplementation have never found it leads to hair loss. And I also find it hard to believe that people would not have reported and or noticed sooner as creatine supplementation has been going on for many, many years. I'm just taking the counter argument argument on that just for a second too. It may be that people aren't taking it long enough to actually see hair loss because we would need to have higher DHT levels for a sustained period in order for that to happen. All in all, I'm not convinced that creatine raises DHT levels to a significant amount. Obviously, a larger study would 
clear this up, but it may be a long time before we see that. So if you're worried about creatine causing hair loss, check your DHT levels. Check it before you start and check it after you start. This will tell you for sure if it's a problem for you. So otherwise, it's probably not an issue, probably not something to worry about. All right, so that's all I had on this video. Does creatine cause hair loss? So how do I do with this video? Let me know what you think in the comment section. Have you been experiencing hair loss and think maybe this removed creatine? Did you do a before and after on your DHT dihydrotestosterone levels in your labs? Let me know. Drop that in the comment section. I'm really curious to know. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.